Hi, I'm Lawrence from Nerd Reactor, and thank you for joining me this afternoon. Thanks for having me. Yes. So I'd like to learn more about some of the beginnings at Funimation, some of the evolution that's gone on from the beginning up to now. Um, in what capacity? Well, some of the great changes that you've seen go on, fan relations, things like that. Uh, okay, let's see. Well, we went from a very small company of, of I'm pretty sure, less than 20 people uh, to, I believe they employ over a couple of hundred people now. Um, the advances in technology led to us having advances in our own technology, so uh, we record things uh, much faster and in, in, in a digital capacity with a higher amount of quality in less amount of time, so that's cool. <laughs> and, still the sa and still the same great voices. Um, cool, yeah, thank you. Uh, we have uh, some voice actors such as myself that have been there since the late 90s uh, contributing in whatever capacity that we're cast in, and that would include some of the original Funimation dub of, uh, of Dragon Ball Z. Some of those guys are still around. Myself, Christopher Sabat, Eric Vale, uh, some of that group, Sonny Strait. You know, we can we can wrangle him down. Yeah. So, what's some of the so what's some of the great things that you've actually seen with the uh, dubbing technology when you're going to do like a redub such as you've done with Dragon Ball Z Kai, as opposed to the original? Well, um, everything collectively just kind of helped out. The, the advancements in technology are fantastic, and then the additional years of experience that the voice casts have been involved with with other other anime properties, and you know, if they have an agent, other other work that they get, video game work, any other sort of voice work, uh, it all adds up together to just everything is better. You know, more experience makes you better. Um, uh, cooler animation makes it seem better. You know, there's a bunch of reasons that uh, it all just improves overall. Time and advances that come with it uh, help out that process a lot. And also, what have you thought? Because you've done pretty much everything uh, with Funimation, right? You've done script writing, adapting, uh, direct direction, mm -hmm. and everything. So what's some of the things you've actually seen when you're teaching uh, newer people uh, who may have been anime fans about actually working in the business? Um... Newer things I would teach them. Yeah, like what? Because like you, when you went in, uh, what do you think? Some of the things that you uh, show them now, like with like anime dubbing, that you may think about. Well, I mean, way way back in the day, like in the '90s, uh, before there was a lot of uh, digital technology to take advantage of. Um, you know, some in some places were still what's called chasing tape. You know, we were using Beta Masters and whatever else. These big gigantic. Um, network television masters of uh, the video and audio, syncing that with a computer system to record new audio, um, and having to have those two mechanisms eventually line up and tie in and record, it's just, I would say that it was at least five or six times longer just to try to record anything because of that sort of technology. Um, so as far as me teaching them, I mean, there wouldn't be much for me to teach except for like, you have it really easy now. <laughs> like, this is the easiest it's been so far to do this particular type of work. So you should be thankful, so. Now, uh, changing the subject, what would be some of your favorite fan experiences, uh, people dealing with fans and how that's uh, changed over the years too? Um, well, as far as how it's changed over the years, I would say that it's changed the same way that it has for any sort of fandom. The uh, the internet has made it indescribably easy to find people and communicate with them, which can be good and bad. Um, in, you know, 70s, 80s, on back, if you, you know, were a fan of someone, you would write them a hard copy letter on a piece of paper, or type one up, or whatever, and send it off in hopes that you would get a reply someday, maybe. Um, and now you can, you know, seek them out online. Most people have some sort of social media or a website or anything like that and write them. But with that, I mean, it's great that you can do that, but now there's the expectation of, well, it's been like six hours. This person hasn't written me back yet. What a jerk they are, you know? And uh, compounded with the fact that everyone can now find people that easily. So now they all are writing in. So the people who on my end of the, of the scenario who have to, you know, want to write back and say, thank you so much, whatever else, now that stack is super deep with people who have a faster expectation of turnover. So there's good and bad. Well, and fan experiences at cons? Fan experiences at cons, um, I don't know necessarily how they've changed except for um, 
more of more, them. more time goes by, there's more and more fans, and there's more and more people who are aware of the, the type of work that we do, which I think is really cool. Um, let's see. I sometimes get gifts. I, I frequently, you know, hear from people how much that uh, this particular show meant to them and how my work involved with the show um, furthered their enjoyment of it. They'd already seen it in Japanese or something like that and they liked the English as well and it was a new experience for them. Or people who had never even seen the Japanese version of a show, uh, you know, the work that I helped uh, on it in some capacity was their introduction to it and it opened a whole new world for them and they, you know, thanked me for that as well. So, it, you know, there's a long laundry list of any sort of scenario that's like that and they're always really awesome. So what's some of, the, do you uh, work actively with some of the planning of uh, fan experiences and fan events and, and things like that or give ideas in? Um, sometimes I'm brought in, I'm usually not the, the spearhead of such an activity because we have people that that's their job is to mm -hmm. come up with these sort of scenarios and fun experiences. Um, but if someone brings me in on like, hey, we're thinking about this, I might throw an idea or two into the pot. I might, um, you know, point out other things that they hadn't talked about. Like, well, that's great, but have you thought about this and we could tie in with this capacity? You know, I, I'm, more, I'm more of a collaborator than an original uh, conceiver of uh, how that would go. So what's some of your favorite collaborations that you've uh, uh, worked on throughout the years, uh, not just with uh, voice acting dubs, but just in like fan experiences or well, just uh, working with people in general. Um, let's see. There's been all sorts of uh, neat experiences. There have been uh, gigantic uh, cosplay gatherings that have been asked to be a part of, like very large, uh, highly attended Full Metal Alchemist cosplay panels, or you know, cosplay shoots, and have asked to be uh, to be there. Um, there's been film premieres that I've asked to be there as a part of too. The, the first Alchemist movie that we premiered at Anime Expo several years ago, I think there was like 4,500 people there. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic for a film premiere, especially for anime. Um, there have been uh, the red carpet event for the FMA movie for the Conqueror of, not the Conqueror of Shambhala, that was the first one, for uh, the Sacred latest. Sacred Star of Milos, right? Yeah, the, the Sacred Star of Milos in Los Angeles. That was great, you know? Um, Have they ever to do, to, I've known this with some of the other voice actors who I'm friends with, have they ever asked to do any uh, cra crazy things with uh, the cosplay gatherings and stuff like that? Not particularly. I mean, I haven't been asked to participate in much of a capacity beyond just being there and, you know, they haven't asked me to get dressed up in anything. I I have my own accord. Oh, nice. Um, when we did a the announcement for Oron High School Host Club and we were announcing mm -hmm. the cast, I was the line producer of that show, and Caitlin Glass, who was the ADR director that I had hired for it, ended up casting me as uh, Ranka Fujioka, which is Haruhi's father, who's a crossdresser. And I thought it would be funny, because I wasn't part of the original uh, set of announcements, I thought it would be funny if I came out uh, in a dress at the end, because everyone else had come out dressed as their character, and you know I knew that that would go over very well, and I thought that the the little cross-dressing at the end would get quite a laugh, and it did. That's some of the most fun, just to getting the reactions from the fans yeah. and the fan experiences and everything like that. So you think that's one of, do you think that's something that's gonna keep growing more and more, like wanting to have these uh, fan experience, not just at cons, but also like more premieres around uh, the nation? I would hope so. I mean, uh, if the fan support is there, then someone's gonna find a way to try to help that grow. Uh, if the fan support is not there, they're going to not really see the need to bother with it. So the more and more that the fan base supports these types of events, then there'll be more of them. Which, as we know, is continuously increasing at an exponential scale. Sure. So is there any, is anything, without doing any spoilers, anything you're particularly excited about coming up, uh, things like that? Well, later this evening, we're doing the dub premiere of Wolf Children, which is the new um, Moto Hosoda film. And um, I love Hosoda's work. I think it's so beautiful. And I'm looking forward to the audience reaction of this film. I think it's very, very beautiful. And I'm very proud of the work that uh, the English cast has put into it. And I just think that it's a beautiful movie, no matter what language you watch it in. And um, 
for any sort of, uh, if there happens to be any sort of additional theatrical appearances, uh, that would be fantastic. And uh, I would hopefully, uh, I know for the for Summer Wars, I flew around a couple places in the U.S. to catch it at different venues. And if that happens again, then I might be traveling around to do that with Wolf Children as well. So, Awesome. Well, thank you very much for this interview. It was great to have you with us. Can we get a shout out for Nerd Reactor? Cool. Sorry? Can we get a shout out for Nerd Reactor? Yeah. Oh. But what, would, what would you like me to say about it? Oh. Well, uh, pick a voice and shout out Nerd Reactor. <laughs> Nerd Reactor? <laughs> no, I'm asking. Oh, well, yeah, just give, it, give us a shout out. Pick one of your character voices and give us a shout out. Okay. Like you're watching? That's what I'm asking. Oh, yeah. Would you like oh, me to say, okay. But... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Enjoy Nerd Reactor or something. Okay. Enjoy Nerd Reactor! <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very welcome.